everyone to attend my thesis defense. Um, my thesis title is a well presented network in efficiency, security, and privacy. My thesis advisor is Professor Marco Grusso. Here is the outline. I will give a short introduction on well presented network first, and then I will talk about efficiency. I will pre uh, present our ca geocache and boomerang algorithm uh, to efficiently manage that in well presented networks. Then I will talk about the security. Majorly, I will talk about uh, key agreements for building secret key in vehicle to vehicle and the vehicle to infrastructure networks. And then the third part. Hey. Uh, can you can you pull your computer a little bit so that we can see the the, the, the entire slide? We are we are we are away. I don't way. We are away. Wait, which way? No 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 no. We are away. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Yes. Okay. And the. And the, uh, the third part is uh, privacy, which covers three subtopics. The first subtopic is a uh, virtual triple-line zone, a way of path-click algorithm, in which we provide a privacy protection algorithm, while at the same time uh, provide a high data quality for applications. The second part is called uh, linking through driving characteristics, uh, in which I studied the possibility of privacy information leakage due to the detailed, info, de detailed location information available today. And the third part, I call it uh, design models with limited information. Because in this uh, work, we assume uh, there is no location proxy servers. So the privacy information collected by, uh, um, there is no location ser uh, proxy server to collect information and the uh, procedure on the privacy protection. And the last part is, uh, short summary on the talk. So let me start with the introduction. So, vehicle, of course, is the basic component in vehicle safety networks. Today's technology trends have led to sensing, uh, positioning, communication, and the computation capability into vehicles. Current vehicle already ca carry a set of sensing and the, to provide the information like engine, emission, Performance as well as the uh, as well as environment. Uh, GPS and the cellular system can be used uh, to accurately record the user's location. As far as communication is concerned, besides the cellular access option, um, automobile industry has already defined the uh, IEEE AO211P for wireless access in vehicular environment to enable v V2V and the uh, V2I communications. In the next few slides, I will give some example of data, different data type can be collected through vehicle sensing network. Uh, this basically shows that internal sensor can be collected through onboard dynamic system 2, which is mandatory in US since 1996. The left side is a connector to access those data uh, through the specification. And the right side is the table shows the internal sensor information of the vehicle. Besides those, I call it internal sensor information. Modern vehicle can also detect, uh, can also detect uh, many, can also provide many external sensor information. For example, ring sensors. For example, uh, the front and the rear view cameras, and accelerometers. In our exper experience, we also use network camera to catch. Uh, traffic conditions. <coughs> this is another set of data tab can be collected through vehicle sensing network, the location information. This slide shows the GPS uh, on the left side, and the right side shows the different, vehicle, uh, different data, data types related to the locations. With all these different types of data can be collected in vehicle sensing networks, <coughs> what can we do th with these old data? Of course, many of these data is already very useful for individual vehicle itself. However, many new applications actually can benefit from uh, collecting data from different vehicles and analyze those data. For example, traffic monitoring. So this will require a communication system. In vehicle net sensing network, th there are two, kind of, two types of communication networks. Vehicle to vehicle. When vehicle talk directly to another vehicle, they form a small uh, V2V networks. 
And when vehicle need to talk to remote server, then roadside unit may help it. And when at that time we form a, a vehicle instruction network. <coughs> Uh, with all this kind of different uh, data type we available and the communication network available, uh, a, a set of new application can be developed. For example, collection warning at the intersection. When a sensor detects uh, a sound break from the driver, it can send a warning message through v V2V network and uh, uh, inform the vehicle following it. When a vehicle driving on the road, highway, for example, he can collect the different sensor data and combine them to analyze what the current uh, road conditions. If it determines there is a pothole, he can use vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle network uh, to deliver a warning message to the vehicle after it. On the other hand, he can also send uh, those data information through vehicle-to-instruction network uh, to, remote sense, uh, to remote server, if available. Uh, the, this kind of network is available. And the engineer sitting in the end of the network then can analyze data across uh, by collecting data from different vehicles and determine if they need to send engineer to fix the road. Different from path, uh, engineer had to come to the site and uh, manually check the road conditions. <coughs> The last example I show here is a uh, uh, accident. Vehicle, when a vehicle have an accident uh, hit the roadside uh, object, he can immediately broadcast a uh, uh, warning message through the vehicle-to-vehicle -to -vehicle network. And also, he can send a message to the remote server through the re vehicle -to instruction network. For example, to uh, send a message to the emergency department or Police department. So I hope uh, the f the previous few slides give you a little bit impression of the vehicle sensing networks and what kind of data they can collect in vehicle sensing network, uh, what kind of uh, communication network they provide, and what kind of application they can support. Now let's uh, enter into our main topic. The first one is our geocache Bruma uh, algorithm. In this work. We focus on location-based service, and um, we are more interested in event trigger uh, scenarios because we we believe that uh, when event triggers, there are a large number of sensor data may be generated and they require communication vehicle between vehicle to vehicle and uh, between vehicle to instructors. <coughs> if we cannot uh, efficiently handle this data, then we may uh, face uh, uh, data fraud issues. So, in our work, we present a concept called a location-centric peer-to-peer. This is different from previous work, previous methods. For example, traditional one called a centralized method, where vehicle keep up uploading what they have, what the data what they have to remote server. This the disadvantage is obvious. Like, the many unnecessary uh, many data is unnecessary to be uploaded. And uh, because uh, data are collected from different vehicles, many of them are redundant data. Another traditional method is the query response method, in which vehicle carries this package, uh, we along the vehicle carry this package away. Uh, <coughs> and only when a vehicle, another vehicle or the, the central server query for particular information around the location between a time uh, between a specific time range, then the vehicle which has this kind of data will send back response. <coughs> this is better than centralized method because many unnecessary data does not need to be that do, ne do not need to be uploaded. But it also raises some problem. For example, <coughs> if, if uh, for example when we have carried away these data, it may be hard to reach them later. So our Location central the peer to peer, the basic idea is uh, to let the vehicles <coughs> <coughs> generate this sensor data and try to relate this data to other vehicles. And the purpose is to objective is to bound this data to a particular locations, even trigger the locations, or we call it anchor locations. This concept actually derive our algorithm, geocache and the boomerang. Uh, in geocache 
vehicle, when they're driving along the road, uh, they keep collect sensing data. And when there is an event it detected, they will generate a geo convert this data to geocache page. And geo this geocache page, because uh, the reason we call it geocache because we <coughs> it has geography location with it. We want to attach this geocache page to a particular area of interest. And later on, when if there is a query sent from user or from the central server, then the geocache page will be uploaded to the server. On the other hand, <coughs> if the geocache has accumulated, uh, achieved a certain level, information has accumulated, achieved a certain level, it can also automatically send this data to central server. <coughs> The geocache include collect, collection and convert page, convert information to geocache and hand off data, several steps. The boomerang is basically a protocol to support the geocache concept, uh, algorithm ideas. Uh, just like a player game, boomerang game, uh, this method is let, use, let the vehicle carry the uh, information, geocache, away from the uh, event trigger location for a while and then let the, the data carry, be carried back. Uh, it also has another feature, is along the local aggregation. When vehicle has multiple geocache collected from different uh, uh, owner, and then they can aggregate the data, remove redundant information. One of the challenges in each boomerang, anchoring, uh, boomerang protocol is the boomerang anchoring protocol, which says how, do you, how are you going to find the best candidate when you want to hand off your geocache page to other vehicles, <coughs> to next carrier. Uh, we started two uh, protocols. One is called Max Progress. In Max Progress, basically it used the distance as the, you, you create the distance as the criteria. As shown in the figure, A is the trigger loca uh, event trigger location, and B is the position location where the current ca carrier ha uh, is and uh, E and C are the, another two vehicles. If based on uh, Euclid distance, however, sometimes it doesn't work. As shown in here, the, the vehicle E is uh, the, most, the closest one to the anchor location. However, because there is no route from E to A, then this, G, this um, boomerang anchor protocol may be fail on these scenarios. <coughs> Therefore, we, we, we study or we present another uh, a protocol called the reverse trajectory protocol, which we combine, the, which we, uh, actually record the trajectory information along with the geocache. So this protocol includes several steps. <coughs> First step is the handoff initial. One vehicle uh, decided to hand off its package of geocache to other vehicles, then he send out its trajectory information. And the uh, vehicles who have this trajectory information will compare with the current location and uh, to determine if they are a good candidate or not. And uh, after they de determine they are a candidate, then they rank themselves based on the location and the, the, tra uh, and the directions on the trajectory. They, uh, we quantize those ranks into numbers and uh, represent again through the time delay in sending back ACKs. So when the, finally, when the current carrier receives the first ACK, he will choose the vehicle as the next carrier. <coughs> to form a good trajectory, it needs several steps. First step is to, uh, we call it data smooth, in which basically we use using average value to represent, represent uh, original raw GPS data. Uh, for example, in our experiment, we use 20 min meters data. Uh, every 20 meters da data, uh, we uh, get the average value and then replace the original per second data. This way, we reduce the number of samples needed for form the trajectory and also smooth the path. The next step is called uh, curve segmentation. This is further step to reduce the number of samples needed to form a trajectory. As shown in slides, uh, orange direction is A to B, and when vehicle arrive at C, it forms the trajectory uh, and form the angle between A and B, uh, small a. If the angle is smaller than a predefined threshold, then this point B will not be used, uh, be, will, will be dropped. Later on, when vehicle C arrive at D, 
uh, from another thread angle, which is small b. If it is bigger than the threshold, then we keep we will keep the point. So through this way, we further reduce the number of samples needed to form trajectory. Uh, on the other side, uh, on the other side, when we have to carry back the geocache page to the anchor location, it also needed to do. Uh, it also have some work to do. Uh, first is the sh keep shrink the traces, which become closer and closer to the anchor location. And also it needed to detect the diversity, because sometimes vehicle may not arrive at the de de uh, anchor location. Before it arrive at the anchor location, it already drive to other place, uh, drive away from the, de uh, from the trajectory. We use uh, the following <coughs> formula to uh, determine if a vehicle is away from the trajectory. We use distance and the angle threshold, both. We did a proof of concept uh, experience, and we implemented uh, we implement the proto prototype and did a proof of concept uh, experiment. Um, the same data are collected through OBD2 devices, and we also use USB GPS to collect the location information through a network camera to capture images. The data, the geocache page is stored in the MySQL database. The communication is through a a uh, wireless car. And uh, here is the, on the right side is a scenario we use in our proof of concept experiment. Three cars is driving on the road uh, in our cool campus. And uh, the, we assume there are several even, event trigger locations. When vehicle driving by this location, they generate uh, send the data converted to geocache page. And when they leave it from the <coughs> uh, area of interest, they hand off to, the, uh, to other cars, let other cars to carry back this package. Uh, this this proof of concept uh, experience shows that most of our module works as expected. For example, the geocache aggregation, the uh, boomerang handoff procedure. However, one of the difficulties is to determine the <coughs> divergency uh, threshold. So we conduct another experiment. Basically, drive around our campus for two hours collect uh, this GPS data. Uh, the same route we drive twice. <coughs> the first time, we keep driving on the main loop. And the second time, we drive uh, to the side, side street uh, frequently. This way, we form two trips. And then we cut these trips into segments and then overlay them together to get uh, the ground truth of, in which uh, ground of truth of uh, 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 divergence case and no divergence cases. Based on this ground truth, then we use the classification algorithm uh, to find the best threshold for divergence detection. As shown here, the, head, the, angle dif the best angle for highway cases about 0.29, and the best uh, distance threshold for highway cases is about uh, 16 meters. We compare our anchor protocol through simulation. We notice that uh, the performance of anchor protocol may impact by the road connectivity and uh, the road topology. Uh, especially, we, we believe that uh, maximum progress methods may impact, uh, um, may, uh, may be impacted a lot by this. When fully connected, when in the fully connected situations, uh, there, may, there is a small chance that uh, vehicle which is close to the anchor location will not be able to bring back the geocache page. Therefore, let, let's check the uh, result. The result shows uh, actually in fully connected cases, uh, our max, uh, the maximum progress method did uh, overperform the, then our proposed reverse trajectory method. <coughs> However, in a discontinued, not, not not uh, two city grade cases. The connective is not very well. Then our proposed reverse trajectory will perform much better than maximum progress method. <coughs> Which actually consistent with our assumption, but we are with our assumptions. Uh, then we started, then we wanted to see since simulation shows this kind of result, so what will happen in the real roadmap? How what kind of connective in the real real world map? real roadmap is. So we do, did a simulation using South, South NG roadmap. And uh, we, uh, let parameter, we use parameter 
traffic simulation model to generate about one million records and uh, five thousand cars in this simulation uh, last for al almost one hour. The result is based on five thousand uh, repeated simulation results. The first figure shows uh, when the handoff de delay is, at, is, uh, is 750 seconds. Why we change the radio range? The, in the real road map case, our reverse trajectory map, uh, protocol actually over, is better than maximum progress in most cases. Only in small radio range cases, it uh, perform, uh, does not perform as well as the maximum progress method. This is because in the small communication range cases, <coughs> the reverse trajectory method cannot find the next, next carrier at all. And the maximum progress can at least find someone try to uh, bring back this packet. And uh, next, we actually combine these two algorithms together to form an adaptive version. This adaptive version will work first uh, consider reverse trajectory algorithm. If there is no candidate, no next carrier can find the each downgrade to max progress method. The adaptive version actually perform uh, better than both of the max progress and the reverse trajectory versions. And uh, finally, I show a <coughs> result uh, uh, based uh, when the time delay handoff, delay, uh, the handoff delay time changes. As shown, when the time handoff delay time changes, the performance or for all of them were degraded. This actually inspired our another work, uh, mainly conducted by Ping Ling Sun, to study the proper handoff time uh, in his work. Okay. To conclude uh, this part of work, uh, we present a new concept called the location-centric peer-to-peer -peer concept, and it derives the uh, algorithm of geocache and the boomerang. The boomerang. <coughs> Uh, uh, in Boomerang Android algorithm, we compare three uh, protocols, maximum progress, reverse trajectory, and adaptive algorithms. <coughs> and uh, among them, the adaptive algorithm performed the best. And uh, we also discussed uh, the way to uh, build a trajectory. For example, the step of curve segmentations and how to uh, detect divergences. We did a simulate, we did a, uh, <coughs> we implemented the prototype uh, did a uh, proof of concept experiment and uh, compare the performance through simulation data and also through the real world map data generated based on real world map. So this concludes the first part of my work, uh, uh, geocache the boomerang protocol. Next uh, is about security. <coughs> In this work, uh, basically, I want to present the two key agreements scheme to build a secret key for vehicle to vehicle and the vehicle infrastructure network. It is designed to have two set of different secret key for vehicle sensing network. This, for example, when a drive drive to its destinations along the road, he may query, send a query to the central server for information of a particular segment of road uh, on its the traffic con con uh, condition for a particular road segment on its way to the destination. If it does not have the secret key to secure its communication with the central server, then his query may be overheard by <coughs> excuse me, other uh, nearby vehicles and, and uh, disclose his private information. <coughs> On the other hand, sometimes a vehicle may, not, may just want to get some information about its neighborhood. This can be done by through vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle -vehicle communication. And the, uh, you, uh, the driver may not want to ex uh, expose his uh, current location to uh, remote servers. So that's why we want to have two sets of secure keys. Mm. And uh, in vehicle-to-vehicle -to -vehicle network, uh, we assume there are no trusted third parties available. And another reason is we cannot rely on vehicle infrastructure network to provide a third party for vehicle to vehicle networks. <coughs> so, and um, we assume there is no pre shared secret key because we, sh we should allow two vehicles encounter on the road randomly uh, 
want to talk to each other, want to get help from each other. <coughs> and uh, of course, uh, most communication in our wireless, uh, vehicle sense network is wireless in wireless channels. So our v 2 week secure key agreement is based on uh, extract secret bits from channel conditions. Um, there we have two theorems to support this channel to support this uh, algorithm. Uh, mine is the channel with cross theorem, which says to end the user will actually observe a similar channel. Uh, uh, will observe the similar channels. As shown in this uh, ex results from experience. We let Alice and Bob continue simultaneously continue check uh, check the channel condition and uh, generate a probe every one second, 40, 40 probes every one second. This result shows the generator receive signal uh, strength is very cor correlated to each other. It's basically about 0.92. On the other hand, uh, another theory or property support our uh, algorithm is called the spatial decoration property. So as uh, an Eve, which is, uh, is uh, located different uh, from Alice bubble, we observe uh, quite a different channel conditions. We have uh, I list several assumptions here. Uh, this assumption make me make us believe that uh, we extract secret bits uh, is proper to get a secret key for to generate secret key in vehicle to vehicle networks. Because uh, the high mobility, the channel condition is keep changing, so we can extract the secret bits quickly from the wireless channels. And also because the secret key is required on the fly, so there is no no guarantee there is pre shared secret between any vehicle pair. And uh, there we cannot rely on a trusted third party to issue secret key for vehicle to vehicle communications. And we assume uh, and, uh, Adversary is only interesting in overhear the information, secret information, instead of destroy the wireless channels. Because in wireless, destroy is always possible. <coughs> adversary is, uh, uh, we have a small limitation. Adversary has to be a little bit uh, away from the uh, two t uh, communication, communication users. And we also uh, hope our scheme will not be broken just because the adversary has a very powerful computation capabilities. <coughs> Previous research work has shown the ability to extract the secret bits from various channels. Basically, they can divide into two categories. One is the pre-probe method, in which uh, two users uh, check, cap, look at the channel for a short time period and determine the threshold. And then later on, they use this threshold to determine the bit can be generated. <coughs> the disadvantage is clear. If there is obviously channel degree or uh, change, then the the uh, the bit generator are all uh, the same values. The second method is called the pre uh, post pre probe method, in which users uh, collect the channel condition first and then determine threshold. However, it still does not solve the previous issues. Other issues, such as a small fluxing issue, is also a problem. Some of small fluxing issue says, uh, issue says when channel condition is stable, then Alice and Bob, um, well, the small fluxing may be dominated the channel. So at that time, it is actually no, no way to extract a secret bits. And if you extract anything, then that's wrong for Alice and Bob. <coughs> In 2009, a paper presented by Mobicon said, uh, uh, give an example that the adversary may able to insert an object in between Alice and Bob to manually control the channel condition. For example, block a, push, a large portion of the communication channels. This way, <coughs> the uh, uh, this way the key generator from Alice and Bob uh, will be controlled by the adversary. And finally, the previous work uh, they do not sh should satisfy the key generation speed. So we based on our previous work, uh, we uh, propose our differential approach. The differential approach is majorly focused on the change uh, <coughs> in the channel conditions. For example, we predefine a time interval. If Alice Baba both see a large change in these time interval, 
about the ch channel condition, they were uh, considered there is a bit generated. It basically covers several steps. <coughs> it first uh, collects a sample <coughs> simultaneously, channel condition simultaneously from both end user, and then they group the sample together to, uh, to uh, group the sample together to form several segments. The next step is to remove the impact of small fluctuation by using moving average. And the fourth step is to independently extract secret bits. And the last step is to exchange the uh, information between Alice and Bob to confirm they, have, they were agreed on a particular location, a particular index of, uh, of generators, this kind of bits, secret bits. <coughs> we also add an extra step, high entropy convert. This is because we notice that uh, one channel sometimes may not uh, change really randomly. So in that case, uh, the bit switch rate is, will not be followed. The ideas of bit switch rate should be generated. So we, we uh, in our uh, conversion step, we drop or flip step some out of bits to make the <coughs> generator bit, uh, secret key has high entropy. <coughs> Based, uh, uh, another different, a little bit different version compared to fixed interval case is called the dynamic method, in which we remove the dependence on the time interval parameter. Instead, we use, uh, <coughs> for example, the first probe values as the reference, and Alice and Bob uh, observe the channel until they see enough change, large change, compared to reference, then they determine there is a bit generated. <coughs> Our vehicle infrastructure key agreement is all based on the idea of diversity. So we let the, <coughs> if there is roadside unit along the roads somewhere, then we let the roadside unit to keep broadcast seeds uh, in different ch channels. So vehicles, they, because they, uh, when they drive into the uh, nearby the uh, roadside unit, if they listen to the different channel, they will collect the different seeds. <coughs> On the other hand, uh, because of the high mobility, vehicle in even the nearby vehicle, two vehicles, uh, one vehicle may be in the communication range of uh, roadside unit, but another vehicle may not. This will also cause different uh, seeds received by vehicles. The third is time diversity. So we allow the user to use the uh, seeds collected from different dates, different time. This will improve, increase the difficulty for our adversary to have all the seeds to uh, generate, uh, to finally uh, generate the secret keys. The last step uh, to enhance the, sec uh, the secret key is to allow the seed exchange. This way, we let the vehicle uh, exchange their secret seed. So this way, vehicle will not only receive seeds uh, from the roadside units he drive by, but also he can receive some of the seeds he never, the roadside unit he never pass by from other vehicles. This also imp increased the difficulty for adversary collect all the seeds of that vehicle, the vehicle has. To evaluate our vehicle to vehicle key agreement, uh, we use uh, we did an uh, experiment. Let the two users uh, in a related channel keep sending, uh, keep ch probe the channel conditions. Uh, and uh, we collect uh, 50,000 uh, samples. And uh, based on this sample, we generate, uh, we tried uh, different uh, key agreement schemes. And so sure, the proposed uh, uh, different approach, especially the dy dynamic one, has high bit generation rate than the uh, baseline which is also a, a, a protocol based on extraction secret bits from uh, wireless channels. <coughs> uh, the bit matching rate is high for all of the four schemes. And actually, uh, the dynamic one and the fixed interval with tau equal 10 is a little bit higher than the baseline cases. <coughs> the, the last figure shows the <coughs> when we we noticed some of the bits generated may have low entropy. Then we convert those bits into, uh, drop some of bits or flip some of bits, make the, f f make the final secret key has high entropy. In that case, uh, we, 
we, uh, we show that uh, still the dynamic methods can achieve, with, and the fixed interval with tau equal 10 has the best uh, performance than the others. Mm. Actually, we, uh, I have more uh, discussion and the results in this part of work. Uh, for the time reason, I'm not going to present it here. We discussed, uh, uh, in, in a paper, I uh, also discussed the uh, in fact, uh, for the uh, effect of the time interval on the key generation rate. I also discussed the, uh, uh, the small fraction error, the estimated small fraction error value impact on the, the secret key generation speed. <coughs> this set up, the next result <coughs> is from the uh, uh, from a pyramid traffic, traffic, uh, traffic simulation, and uh, we <coughs> uh, still use the South NG network uh, roadmap. We assume that every 1.5 kilometers there is a roadside unit uh, broadcast seeds every 0.5 seconds in three channel in one of the three channels. The histography picture shows that uh, most uh, seeds will only be sh will be shared by less than 10 vehicles, and most time. Uh, uh, see many times a seed is only you showed by one shared by one vehicle. <coughs> the, this in this figure we show adversary has a strategy to attack the uh, to attack the users. He he chose to cooperate with different vehicles, a large number of vehicles. However, when it, the when the adversary cooperates with uh, even ninety percent of your vehicle to collect seed from them he still cannot guarantee a very high successful attacking rate and show his figures. <coughs> the next slide shows the strategy adversary used is to uh, monitor the roadside unit. By monitoring 90% of the roadside unit, he can almost know 90% uh, of the uh, seats, of course. And uh, if we allow them, the vehicle to exchange the seats, uh, when we use the number of extra seeds to generate the final key, actually it turned out uh, the adversary will still fail to attack a uh, user. So to conclude this part, we propose uh, uh, and evaluate two uh, key agreement scheme. First one is for vehicle to vehicle network, which, had, uh, which is based on the uh, uh, based on extracts the secret key uh, bits from wireless channels. We call it a different approach. Let's review the <coughs> approach a little bit. Uh, so Alice and Bob uh, probe the channel at the same time simultaneously. Uh, <coughs> because channel is process theory, they will see similar uh, uh, channel conditions. If which is uh, sit, sit a little bit away from Alice and Bob, will see different channel conditions. And based on this channel, con uh, channel condition, Alice Bob use our differential approach to generate secret key, <coughs> which will be different from Eve's secret key. The next approach is uh, vehicle to uh, yes, for vehicle infrastructure. Basically, we based on the diverse theory. When Alice uh, drive on the road, he select collect the seeds because of frequency diverted, time diverted, and space diverted. The seeds he collect will be different from Eve. And uh, furthermore, we allow vehicle to exchange seeds between themselves. <coughs> then it will further make it difficult for you to have all, this, have all the seeds. In the end, if we use methods such as uh, exclusive all, then the final secret key will, will be different as long as there is one seed different between the legal user and the uh, attacker. We did, a, uh, we, perform, we did a performance evaluation through both simulation uh, data, uh, simulation and the experience data. <coughs> so next I will talk about our privacy work, <coughs> which covers the three, three parts. Before I start our major uh, privacy work, I would like to uh, show you some recent, uh, uh, something recently happened in privacy uh, domain, as in the privacy field. This is the uh, private concern on location-based service. Because the vehicle center network provides a large number of location-based service. <coughs> so in 2009, January, 
uh, Department of U United States, uh, the Department of Justice in United States report that uh, <coughs> based on 2006 data, 26,000 uh, 26,000 people are the GPS that is uh, victim of the GPS stalking. On 2010 December, <coughs> an investigator by Wall Street Journal uh, found out that uh, among top 101 uh, mobile uh, mobile applications, 47 of them send the users location information to third party without users users concern. And um, in 2011. A customer found out that uh, Android phone and uh, Android phone and uh, uh, iPhone uh, collect user location information and the private information and send it to Google and Apple. Even users are not using location-based service, and uh, for Apple case, they cannot even stop this kind of connect, uh, collections. In 2011 November, customer found out a company called uh, Carry IQ. <coughs> actually got information, private information from smartphones. People, most people do not know what is this company about. <coughs> Finally, in 2011, <coughs> US Senator uh, support, uh, <coughs> support an act called the Location Privacy Protection Act of 2011. All above news <coughs> indicates that uh, location pr uh, privacy issue has drawn more and more attention in recently. And the issue has become more and more serious with the new technology available today. <coughs> so let's start uh, with our first protocol, uh, <coughs> VTR zone pass through key algorithm. This protocol, uh, uh, this project is work co uh, co with the uh, uh, civil engineering department, uh, Professor Ben and his students. We target on uh, applications such as traffic audit and intersections. When we, uh, in this kind of application, uh, data are required from uh, <coughs> uh, vehicles at a particular area of interest. <coughs> when they collect those data from vehicles, uh, then they were using some algorithm, for example, queuing lens estimation, which is uh, developed by our partner to estimate the road condition or uh, traffic conditions. This is very convenient for them. However, it also raises the privacy issues because <coughs> the data collected by the uh, from uh, by the um, remote server may not uh, may be public those data for other research purpose. Um, if an adversary knows there is data related to user location information, he may legally or illegally attack. Attack this, uh, <coughs> attack this database and uh, get information from, uh, get to user location information and further dig out more private information about the each users. So, we present a concept called the uh, <coughs> virtual triple line zoom aware systems. In this concept, uh, we assume there is a virtual tri uh, virtual triple line zoom, which is also based on our. Uh, our group's previous work, uh, virtual triple line. This virtual triple line zoom uh, concept uh, assumes the, uh, the central server will inform the vehicle before it enters into a particular area of interest. Let it know the location and the size of the zones. So when the vehicle enters into the zone, they, can, they, they will start to upload the data to the central server. Uh, note this way you do this way the vehicle does not need to upload uh, all the sensor data along the road. This reduces communication or cost and also pri pri uh, protect the user privacy because data is only required in a particular area of interest. And we also use the location proxy server to further enhance the privacy protection. This location proxy server will uh, handle several uh, well implement several pri uh, privacy procedures. As shown in this table, these are several traces from <coughs> uh, users. If we originally, if they have the ID with, uh, attached with these tracers, the traces, then it is easy for adversary <coughs> to connect uh, these continued traces and uh, form the uh, original whole tra trajectory of a user. So the location proxy server will remove these traces 
and I will remove those IDs and use a pseudo name, a pseudo ID to represent, uh, replace them. The pseudo ID will be different across different uh, virtual triple line rules. Even then, it's sometimes there are a small number of uh, uh, traces still can be identified by uh, by an adversary. For example, if those traces shows the continuous trends and the very close time and in locations, very similar locations, then other way traces may be show very different from this trace. Then an adversary may be identified that this trace may be from one user because they show the continuous tra tra trends and they are very close in time and uh, locations. So what we can do is to filter, uh, delete some of the drop some of the traces. This way, the remaining trace will be <coughs> much different in time, in terms of time, in, the, in terms of location, and it will be harder to be distinguished distinguish from other traces. Our filtering algorithm in, uh, <coughs> includes several uh, parts. The first part is, to is called travel time distribution. We studied the travel time between two VTR zones. Uh, it shows that uh, uh, the travel time it can be properly described through three logarithmic distributions. And this three logarithmic distribution can be actually got from uh, through least square estimations, as shown here. <coughs> uh, okay. The next step is uh, called the path likelihood estimation, which is defined as the if uh, the probability that a vehicle leaving from a VTR zone will arrive at another VTR, VTR zone, the probability. And uh, finally, we use uh, entropy as a criteria to determine if the data should be traced, should be dropped or not. The entropy is a, uh, is a combination of the probability, uh, which is a joint probability of the path likelihood and the travel time distributions. We evaluate our algorithm uh, using tra uh, parameter traffic simulation. This sub this network is this map shows a sub network of SR41, the city of Fresno in California. It is, the length is about 60 miles and the width is four miles. It covers 20 arterial and three uh, freeways. We deploy 102 VTR zones on this map. We first uh, compare our uh, zone aware path clocking algorithm with the uh, traditional no, uh, zone unaware path clocking algorithms in terms of privacy uh, capability. As, sh as show, uh, uh, we show the different at the different uh, VTR zone locations. After data is after trace has been filtered out, uh, the adversary is trying to link the remaining trace to the knowing, uh, previous knowing traces. The se attacking successful probability is. Uh, uh, for our case, is a little bit higher uh, than the zone uh, unaware path clocking algorithms. And uh, note, in that case, we use a very moderate uh, threshold. And uh, the big difference is in release number of data of samples. Our algorithm can release much more, sa much more sample than the previous algorithms, which is almost close to the original data set. When we conduct, when we input this uh, uh, filtered remaining data into applications, queuing length estimation, uh, we achieve a high performance compared to the zone aware path clocking algorithms. And uh, in the last, we also studied the possibility to reduce the computation cost a little bit in our uh, algorithm because in our algorithm we needed to compare compute the travel time distribution uh, and. Uh, uh, travel time distribution and path likelihood between every pair of VTR zones. In 102 VTR zone pair, in 102 VTR zone, it will have more than 10,000 VTR zone pairs. So we notice that uh, when the <coughs> when the uh, VTR zone uh, away from each other, more than 600 seconds, for example, uh, has a large uh, travel time in between. For example, more than 600 seconds. Then the arrived pro probability and the leaving probability are both very small. The arrived probability is the probability that uh, when a vehicle uh, leaving from VTR zone A will arrive at VTR zone B. Leaving probability is the probability that 
therefore arrive at the VT of B is actually comes from VT of A. Based on these observations, we <coughs> Uh, we actually do not consider we did we do not consider the VTR zone pairs which is away from each other more than 300 seconds away, um, uh, and we find out it is reduction the compute uh, computation by 80 percentage, but only in, in, uh, increase about five percentage of uh, date dropping. To conclude, we have presented a virtual triple line zoom aware pass cloaking algorithm to preserve user privacy. It can reduce the linkability between VTR zone pair and minimize, especially minimize the number of traces that need to be removed for preserving purpose, <coughs> uh, privacy preserving purpose. And our simulation show uh, the results. Our, our algorithm has uh, outperformed the previous uh, classical privacy models. <coughs> the second part is uh, on the other direction, which we call the linkage through driving characters. Basically, we want to attack the existing models. <coughs> Especially, uh, uh, I, so it, I think it's needed to give a short review on uh, existing models. I just use what I have before, zone aware models. And in those kind of models, we release discontinued vehicle traces. It can reduce communication cost. It can also practice user privacy. We use pseudonyms. Uh, instead of original ID, this can this way we uh, this way we can further practice users, make it hard to link uh, different traces, the discontinued traces. Further step is to remove link by a filtering algorithm based on entropy. In our case, <coughs> this example uh, shows us this is a simple example shows that uh, when we are called four traces, ha we have four traces in a in a zone one. Uh, but when we, if we have a zone four, which has only one traces, then it is actually very easy to link this trace to the trace in the zone one, because the trajectory should indicate this trace will be the one here. And uh, other traces is okay if we have a small uh, threshold. Then these three traces is indistinguishable from the other three, from the previous three. So that's the in zone three and the zone five. If there is another uh, zone six, then we should not disclose that uh, trace because it is easier to link this to uh, this trace with uh, the trace in zone three. <coughs> However, with the t in today, uh, we have uh, more and more de precise the location traces. Based on this location trace, we may able to uh, extract a lot of uh, movement driving characteristics, movement characteristics. These characteristics may be caused by some, for example, we call, I call it intrinsic reasons. Vehicle type, for example. Different vehicle type may cause different movement characteristics. If we know this, if we can reversely, based on the movement character, to find out the original vehicle type, then what will happen? The, or, the primary model should be four, the result should be four, uh, assume there are different vehicle types, then basically the privacy model will fail to practice user privacy because it's easy to see different color <coughs> to link the different traces. It, there are many other reasons uh, may cause the different movement characteristics. We call it uh, intrinsic reasons. For example, different uh, drivers, a drunk person will drive different uh, uh, compared to our families. <coughs> Different uh, event, event. Uh, for example, a youth uh, is rush to work or business. He might drive very fast compared to other vehicles. So does the emergency. Uh, so that if a vehicle drive to for an emergency event. On the other hand, a touring bus, city touring bus, may drive much slower than other vehicles, or it has a frequent stop on the road. <coughs> to prove our assumption. We use a <coughs> next generation simulation data set. <coughs> and uh, uh, the data por portion we use is from US Road 101 southbound, <coughs> across the Hollywood uh, freeways. It uh, lasts for 2100 feet, and for in the morning, 7.50 to 8.5 a.m., 2005. It covers five lanes 
on one direction. We study three types of vehicles, the delivery trucks, passenger automobile, and the motorcycles. Sorry, motorcycles in the morning? Yeah, I don't know if I said that. They, they have it's this. It's funny, funny. <laughs> <coughs> This shows the historography of the mean acceleration for different type of vehicle. As shown, motorcycle has different, uh, actually has a usually has a high mean acceleration than other vehicles, <coughs> than other vehicle types. This figure shows uh, mean, I mean, that maximum speed. Motorcycle has high maximum speed, truck and auto has small maximum speed, and especially auto usually has <coughs> large range because <clears throat> there are more auto samples and uh, people driving auto may be cross from range from very young people and uh, senior citizens. In doesn't like a truck, maybe only preference the people and uh, in their middle age or young young age. Sorry, how many how many autos and how many trucks? Okay. Many the auto uh, the uh, I think the auto is uh, uh, forty uh, the the car, uh, the motor, motorcycle is about 47, and the truck is about uh, <coughs> 50. Uh, uh, five zero. Yeah, and uh, there are, <coughs> I think, 1,000 uh, maybe more uh, automobile. So the data are very of course, skewed. So the diversity will be larger. Yeah. yeah, so the diversity will be large for auto. So, and the data set is very skewed. <coughs> This shows the uh, history. Uh, lane one and lane two are the fast lanes. Truck apparently uh, doesn't like to stay in the lane one and lane two most times. <coughs> but instead, it is preferred to stay on lane four and lane five com uh, compared to other type of vehicles. Uh, what is lane four? Huh? How many lanes do they have? Uh, five lanes. So it's the right. Yeah, the right. most right lanes, the most uh, slow lanes. <coughs> most and this is the truck. This, 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 the middle one is the truck, and this is the motorcycle and the auto. <coughs> so this is the time uh, stay. Most times, if it's close to one, that means most time the truck will stay in this, in this lane, in this two lane, one of the two lane. And uh, this is, uh, if it close to zero, that means uh, it does not stay in this lane most, most time. <coughs> So apparently, truck prefer slow lane <coughs> compared to other vehicle types. It it shows some possibility that uh, vehicle type has different. Uh, but is this difference different enough? Yes, that's the pro problem. Based on one one feature, it may not different enough to extract a different type of vehicles. That's why we need to combine. Different. Um, so, so this picture shows them. If you have a um, <coughs> backhand, dif uh, more detailed information, backhand way between uh, available. This the motorcycle has a large, back, uh, smaller backhand way, and the truck has a large backhand way. If this backhand way information mostly usually is a very uh, is not available in previous. I'm sorry, what, what is that? What is mm. uh, the difference, uh, the, the distance difference between your vehicle and the following vehicle, the immediate for the vehicle. Oh. <coughs> yeah, back headway. So the vehicle truck has small, uh, has large back headway. One reason maybe it's because it's very long, and other vehicle has, uh, other driver maybe think it's dangerous, so they keep a little bit of distance. And the, and the motorcycle usually are more, of course, if you correlate this with the speed, that will be, be much more useful. Right? Yes. So <coughs> we cannot just use one, just one feature to extract the variable types. In in fact, uh, we have to use combine different features. So <coughs> and use the classic uh, very many uh, classification models. In my work, uh, I study three models. One is a linear discriminant analyst, another is co quadratic discriminant analyst, and the third one is naive based. Basically, the linear ad ad discriminant analyst assume the boundary between classes is linear, and um, the, the points in the class is, dis is, dis is 
of the density, the density is full of multivariant Gauss distributions. So, <clears throat> and a very important assumption, they have the same covariance for different classes. So, when they need to decide which type, the covariance matrix, the same covariance matrix, make the project part of X can be cancelled out. So, in the end, uh, the decision rule is just based on the linear equations. You want to find the maximum, <coughs> find the class type which can maximize these linear equations. In the quadratic cases, the assumption is uh, the quadratic case. The assumption is the boundary is uh, quadratic, no linear, and uh, it can be easily actually extend from LDA. Just assume the converse for each class is different, so they will have the quadratic part uh, kept. There are other ways to get quadratic classification extended from the LDA. Uh, we use the, the first one. <coughs> Naive based has a very important uh, assumption. That is, uh, inside each class, the features are in conditionally independent from each other. Because of this, we can compute the, um, compu um, the conditional probability of a class uh, to using the Joint probability replace it because of the uh, base theorem. And because the chain rule, we can use a set of com uh, multiplication of the condition probability to represent the joint probability. And because of the conditional independent, we can, re we can remove the dependency on different features of the feature on other features. <coughs> so this next, after we have these three different classification models, we study, uh, we need to actually use, uh, uh, reduce the number of feature will be used. We want to use only the most important feature which can classify different uh, vehicle types. There are two types of way we, do, we did it. Why is manual feature selection? <coughs> By just uh, compare each uh, feature's the capability in classify vehicle types uh, and find the best, uh, several best ones. And then another one is called a P, uh, principal component analysis. This, this method is basically project uh, different, uh, uh, all the features into a small number of dimensions based on their uh, eigenvectors and based on their direction in which have a maximum variance. So this way, we have, uh, through this, we get the following results. Uh, first the result is based on training data set. <clears throat> we compare three LDA, QDA, and naive based. It seems uh, QDA performed the best. It indicates uh, that the class boundary between vehicle types is more looks like a nonlinear, a quadratic one. And the naive base here, and the manual feature selection does not perform well. This maybe indicates the uh, assumption of conditional independence is not really true. So. When we have the other information, which we consider very uh, new detailed information for all of the scheme, they actually improve their performance. PCA actually shows uh, a little bit different uh, results. Now, your base actually improves its uh, performance. I, uh, we believe that is because the dimension generate, uh, the thing, thing dimensions we use generated is more conditionally independent from each other. Uh, with headway information, the throughput, uh, the performance all improved. This is uh, when we put all the uh, results together. Based on this uh, training data set, uh, the result, we also uh, have a set of uh, team folder cross validation, the testing results uh, for different, uh, uh, you, to, for the illustration purpose, I just uh, include the QDA result. The purpose is to show you that it's possible to classify different vehicle types <coughs> based on, uh, to attack uh, the vehicle types based on the moving characteristics. So, which of the features is actually the most important one, the most differentiating factor? Uh, actually, I forgot. Okay. <laughs> but uh, if Because I, I remember yeah. during your uh, proposal, um, you were actually proposing to use acceleration, right? Yeah, actually, definitely very important uh, features, yes. But I uh, forgot which one is the most important. Okay. 
Yeah, but in the PCA case, there is no particular feature you can you can know because its dimension is all okay. ground order tree feature into dimensions. Uh, we extend our results into ge more general cases. Uh, in that case, we use uh, the classification algorithm uh, to we assume each variable itself is a class. Then at that time, if we, we show that the entropy is reduced, if we just randomly assume a vehicle is a target, and it's also improved the, improved the detect tracking rate using QDA. Uh, notice that we um, we we usually the best performance should have when we only care about outline. But in this simulation result, I just use random vehicles. So this is average result. The track rate is still improved using different classification uh, using classification algorithms. To conclude, uh, vehicle classification, uh, we. In this study, I want I basically want to show uh, it's possible to uh, it, it, it is possible to have more uh, privacy leakage due to the detailed location information available. Based on our next next generation simulation data uh, analysis, an adversary can actually identify foreign percentage of trucks from automobile with sex rate of 96 percentage. We also show that. Uh, Outline move pattern can also be identified. The results should generally for attacking random user. The attack, uh, the rate, the access rate is about 28 in our from our simulation data. We, our work also raises several future challenges. For example, how to refine the definition of unlinkability for very fine grid location traces. Otherwise, uh, the current privacy model will uh, cannot achieve their the the the, uh, the expected privacy capabilities and uh, how to eliminate and reduce the in impact of the outline movement characteristics. The last part uh, I call it a design model with limited information because uh, we assume in this part there is uh, no look, uh, uh, we we well, we adapt adapt a more general assumption where. Loc uh, the location trace is needed to up upload the loc uh, periodically. So different from previous work, we assume the area of interest we will collect data. And on the other hand, we assume there is no uh, trusted uh, location proxy server. So the, mo uh, the privacy model cannot use uh, detailed data from uh, collect from all the vehicles. <coughs> And uh, we assume the data, once it uh, is living from a vehicle, it is easy to be accessed by adversaries. So we call it uh, open to the public. We evaluate the privacy uh, system, privacy protection capability through prediction error rate, which is defined as the probability that, a vehicle, uh, that uh, giving a set of uh, traces and uh, uh, user IDs, the adversary they will make mistake or will cannot correctly identify uh, link uh, trace and its corresponding uh, vehicle, uh, vehicle IDs. We uh, we feel uh, we assume the network density, uh, which in highway case is represented as average distance, will have impact on this value. And we also as, uh, uh, notice that the future location density will also impact this. Values as the future location density is considered as in these figures. Vehicle it release data traces in T before T zero, and then it stop uploading data after uh, until time T one. At that time, uh, what will be the vehicle's new locations? We believe this new location will be follow uh, can be anywhere with some particular probability. We guess it's we assume it's. Uh, <coughs> In our case, what we assume in one dimension case, we assume it's cost distributions. And the, the uh, virus and the standard deviation of this cost distribution is used to um, to, to uh, indicate the future location uncertainty. We 
feel the ratio of the average distance versus the standard deviation has a very important impact on the prediction error rate. Uh, to prove our assumption, <coughs> we did a simulation. Uh, we just assume, uh, in a very simple scenario, we assume there is a straight line, which is the road, and we deploy unexpected location on this road, uh, uniform, uniformly. And we also deploy untrue locations uh, on this road. Each one follow a Gauss distribution around its expected locations. And then we uh, check the prediction error rate based on the distance. And we did this uh, experience in n number of time. The first simulation results show that uh, when, when the number of repeated uh, experiments increase, we, uh, we, we see that expected the prediction error rate actually has certain stable values. And the second result shows that uh, the number of vehicles actually has no impact on the prediction error rate. Uh, this is uh, because in, when we talk about the number of vehicles, when we test this, we also, when you increase the number of vehicles, we also improve, increase the size of the uh, networks. So we want to show you the only reason impact the prediction error rate is the density, not how many vehicles in the network. And uh, the last uh, result shows the pretty error rate actually is changing based where, where with, uh, vary, uh, with the value of the ratio. The ratio is uh, every distance divided by the, density, the, the standard deviation. It is actually consistent with our expectation. When you have larger, uh, when you have larger average distance between vehicles, it will be easy for adversary to predict future locations. So the prediction error rate should decrease. When you have small uncertainty, uncertainty uh, when you have large uncertainty value, the ratio will decrease. However, because the large uncertainty value makes it difficult for adversary to predict future location of a vehicle, so the uh, expected prediction rate will increase. We we pro actually we compare three compare three models. Uh, the purpose is to increase the prediction error rate of a system. The three model, first one is random drop. This is a very basic model. Just a drop of a certain percentage of trace to reduce the to actually improve the prediction error rate for a vehicle. And the error rate control is based on the following observation. When you drop when you drop some of the traces, the ratio may change. At that time, the expected prediction error rate is also changed. Then, we have to adjust the percentage of pair to be dropped too, to make it uh, really achieve a desired uh, prediction error rate. The, first, the last one is called a distance-based dropping. So you drop the packet traces uh, when the trace is, very is more close to the expected location. This is based on the observation from here. When you have a normal distribution figure, uh, figure like this, based on things on the samples, while you drop us randomly from uh, half of the samples, it won't change the distribution, so does the standard deviation value. However, if you drop uh, intentionally for the value which more close to the mean values, then the, then the uh, distribution will change. This way, we actually make the uh, it will actually make the uh, uncertainty higher. Than before, so we use the same set of uh, simple scenario to check the performance of to compare the performance of, of these three simple models. The same model shows that uh, error rate control model will release uh, will drop too many too many places, but on the other side, he it can achieve the exact prediction error rate compared to, to to the other two models. When we improve the rate from 0.8 to 0.9 and up, then it shows a similar trends. Uh, overall, the distance-based model has much uh, has better performance than random dropping models. Even this release the same number of data. The, it, it, uh, next, we 
using next generation simulation data, which is uh, from Georgia, uh, from a peach, peach tree street in Georgia, Atlantic, uh, this sec section of road, collect in the afternoon, 4 to 4, 4, 15 p.m. Uh, we first let's look at the one uh, figure. This is expected prediction error rate versus the ratio. It's very surprised actually. The based on the next generation simulation data, it has a very similar trace, uh, the trends as the uh, as what we got from simple scenario. This will will be very useful if you in the future you want to uh, check the experience, uh, check the privacy, the system privacy capability, original system privacy capability, you can just estimate the ratio, the density and the uncertainty of the algorithm. Then you can predict the error rate, estimate and predict the error rate. We redo the same thing as in simulation data, improve the error rate from 0.5 to 0.75. The error rate, error rate control model has exactly matched the design, um, exactly all has better performance to match the uh, prediction error rate, desired prediction error rate. And the distance based uh, sometimes performs better, then sometimes performs worse. But uh, overall, it has a better performance than randomly dropping models. And uh, this is for the another set of results to improve uh, uh, predict error rate from 0 0.8 to 0 0.9 and up. So overall, the if we want to exactly match uh, predicted error rate, then we should use error rate control model. If we, you consider both the uh, performance, the I'm, I'm number. Confused. I mm -hmm. thought error rate is lower the better. So why do we try to increase error rate? Oh, because uh, error rate uh, is uh, we talk about the error rate to the adversary. So if adversary uh -huh. has more uh, error rate, then he is good for us. So if we want to have a trade-off between the performance and the privacy, then we the this the best better is the better one. Never choose the random dropping model. And uh, in this work, we extend our previous surprise work to assumption that there are no trusted location proxy server, so they cannot uh, collect uh, detailed information across different vehicles to do our to implement our uh, previous uh, uh, privacy models. And uh, we study the impact of density to density ratio on the prediction error rate. Finally, we compare three proposed privacy models and the decide that uh, the error rate control is better in practical user privacy. And this based is a good trade off among the three. Uh, yes. So, to summarize, I started uh, and uh, did research in the presented network domain, in particular in efficiency, security, and privacy. We propose uh, and uh, evaluate the geocache and boomerang algorithms to efficiently bound the location information to the interest area. We propose that and evaluate the uh, no tradition secret key elements for both V2V and V2I scenarios. And uh, also in privacy domain, we propose the VTR zone aware pass for a model to practically use the private location information while at the same time uh, provide a high quality data for the application. We studied the possibility that privacy information can leak it due to the driving characteristic which is extracted from detailed location information. We studied the impact on the prediction error rate from the ratio of network density to the trace uncertainty and compare three data field models. In the future, I believe the real percent network will continue to be one of the most uh, one of the hottest research field in the research field. And the efficiency, security, and two traditional problems in network will be keep improved, along with the development of the new technique, new environment, and then the, when the web percent network become more and more mature. Privacy will continue to raise more and more attention. And my study is just a small part of uh, web percent network research domain. I hope uh, future, uh, my work can be a part of other future, other people's future effect, uh, effort. <coughs> okay, that's, that's the presentation of the uh, main work. So here is uh, some uh, overview of the 
paper we have uh, in the last couple of years, and uh, measure a uh, paper and a talk in a conference or workshop. <coughs> um, there is a nice set of small papers, and uh, this is the journal paper we have for the related to all to the previous work. Uh, and uh, finally, lastly, I would uh, send to my uh, advisor, PhD advisor, Mark Grusser, uh, who gave me a lot of help in both study and the research. And uh, especially thanks for keep giving me financial support during the last six years. <laughs> and uh, I would like to thank her uh, co-advisor, uh, Professor John and Professor Ben, uh, give us a lot of uh, suggestion and help us a lot in doing the projects. And uh, I would like to thank our <coughs> Wing Lab Special Director, Professor Ray, who created such a great environment for students to do research here. I would like to thank uh, Associate Director Eva, who uh, gave us, created a lot of experience uh, experience environment and help a lot on our experiment. And uh, thank to all the professors from WinLab and EC, uh, and uh, thank to my friend James and uh, and uh, Lei, and also thank to the secretary Noreen and Elaine and so on. With uh, with their hard work, we can focus on research. Uh, I would thank to my colleagues Ting Lingsun, Chai Po, and Peng Hao. Uh, I'm so glad to cooperate with them in all of our pro so many projects. And uh, thank you to other, all the other friends and the colleagues made in, the, in our lab. And finally, I will thank to my wife and my parents and my daughter. Thank you. <laughs>